Hi, I'm Michelle Sullivan reporting for IMNG. I'm at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium and I'm speaking with Dr. Dahlia Black who's reported to us that once again black women are not getting the kind of care that they should in breast cancer. Dr. Black, you did a, a large um, database study and found some troubling results. Right, that's, that's right. So we were surprised to find, using as the SEER Medicare database from 2002 to 2007, and we evaluated, evaluated over 31,000 patients mm -hmm. to determine the use of central node biopsy in black women compared to white women with early stage breast cancer mm -hmm. who were clinically node negative. And so from that study, we found that black patients were 12 percent less likely to have a sentinel node biopsy compared to white patients. And this is important because the sentinel node biopsy was developed um, in the late 1990s and mm -hmm. mid-2000s to try and lower the complications associated with an axillary node dissection. Mm -hmm. And we do this minimally invasive surgery in order to stage a breast cancer to make sure there's no cancer spread to the axilla. Right. And so appropriate black patients who were a candidate to receive a central node biopsy, so they were pathologically node negative, they were still less likely to receive this newer technique even though they had suitable cancers and were eligible for the technique. And the disparity that you found persisted throughout your study, even, even as sentinel node biopsy was becoming more and more accepted. Exactly right. So the study was from 2002 to 2007. It's interesting, in 2002, it started out, it was low in both white and black women at about, what, 50% and 40%. Um, and then sentinel node biopsy use increased through 2007, but still at 2007, 83 percent of white patients received the sentinel node biopsy compared to only 70 percent of black patients. And what is also interesting is we looked at clinical outcomes mm -hmm. because someone may say, well does it really matter that the black patient had the larger surgery? We still got the information we needed to get. We evaluated all the lymph nodes and we know that that patient doesn't have metastasis. Mm -hmm. So who cares? Um, and so this data demonstrated that those patients had a doubling in the risk of lymphedema, which is arm swelling and can happen at any point after surgery and can be very painful and bothersome and potentially debilitating for patients if it's untreated. Mm -hmm. So did you do any kind of a sub-analysis to try and tease out exactly what this was related to? Right, so we're a little limited because this is a claims retrospective um, uh, database analysis. So the SEER Medicare database does not have information about why a patient would have, would have received a certain treatment. So we, we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, we could gather a little bit of information about sociodemographics, such as patients who are from regions with, with lower um, income, uh, patients who are from regions with lower education status, and patients who are from regions where there are fewer surgeons, they are less likely to get the sentinel node biopsy. There was a pretty wide disparity between the, um, the region that had the lowest rate for black women and the region that had the highest rate for black women. Correct, so this database uh, gathers information from about 12 sites in 12 different regions in the country and the lowest one was Louisiana at about 55, 58 percent and the highest one was Seattle at about 89 percent of patients had a sentinel node biopsy. We still need to evaluate the racial uh, 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 breakdown in each of those 12 regions though. Is there something that can be done about this? Is it, is it surgeon's fault? Are patients not advocating for themselves? Right, so again, we can't really identify that from this study, but we do have information and insight from other types of disparity studies. And so we know that patients who go to um, certain types of hospitals may receive inadequate care or different care than other uh, places or places who are affiliated with uh, cancer centers, uh, designated cancer centers. So there are probably um, systems factors at play, especially in the early 2000s, maybe a, a hospital didn't offer central no biopsy or didn't have the resources available such as the technetium or the Geiger counter that's needed, or it could have been a patient factor. Um, early on a patient may have said, 
um, I want to stick with the traditional surgery to evaluate my axilla and not do the newer technique because right. I'm not so sure about what you're mm -hmm. talking about, doctor. Um, or it could, there could be a surgeon's uh, a role in this process. And so there are some ways through this database to evaluate um, surgeon characteristics, whether they received additional fellowship training, the age of the surgeon, the sex of the surgeon. So we plan to evaluate that as well too. Do you have any um, words of wisdom to surgeons who are going to be uh, performing these procedures? Right, so we basically need to do a better job in um, disseminating uh, practice guidelines as they change and as they are updated from the NCCN and ASCO and all these major uh, cancer organizations. We need to make sure they are broadly um, implemented throughout our country. Um, Right, we need to do a better role of making sure that there are adequate multidisciplinary teams at each hospital to make sure that um, patients are being evaluated by different types of physicians and healthcare providers. And we also need to improve uh, patient education and patient advocacy. If a patient is diagnosed with breast cancer, they need to start to think about the appropriate questions to ask their surgeon. Mm -hmm. What is the appropriate surgery I should have and what are the complications from that surgery? What are my options? So it's sort of a, a two-way uh, street. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you for your interest.